Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about amortization of debt issue cost by using effective interest method. The bond issuance cost, which is, which is also called debt issue cost, are the transaction cost incurred when the bonds are issued. Examples include legal fees, accounting fees, underwriting commissions, printing cost, or it might also include certain promotional cost. When the bonds are accounted for at the amortized cost, you should remember here uh, these point, the cost to issue the debt securities must be reported in the balance sheet as a direct deduction from the face amount of the debt. So don't forget, we will not record these issuance costs as an asset. We will record as a deduction from the face amount of the debt in the balance sheet. Okay, and I will show you. And second point, the debt issuance cost should be amortized over the terms of the bond by using effective interest method, or you can also use the straight line amortization method if the results are not materially different. So how it will work, let's have a, a look with the help of example. So here we have here, assume that K Corporation issued a 10% 1 million bonds due in five years. Okay, so this 10% is the stated rate. This 1 million is the face value of the bond. And this five year is the maturity period. The yield or the market rate is 12% and the bonds sold for uh, $926,399. Now, actually this is the issue price or the cash proceed. You know, the point is, here the face value is 1 million but you issued at 926399 so the difference of these two is called the discount okay the discount on issuance of bonds the bond issuance cost of 20000 were incurred so this is the issuance cost so then what we will do the effective interest rate on this bond is 12.58% and we will use this rate this effective rate rate to amortize the debt issuance cost or to amortize the discount here because we have here discount now here we are assuming interest is paid semi-annually okay so what we need to do here first of all we need to adjust the rate because interest rates are quoted in annual terms so and here we are paying interest semi-annually so that is why we need to adjust rate which we will use in the calculation so first we have a we need to adjust effective rate effective rate was 12.58 percent so you will divide it by two times, two times mean to say because interest is paid uh, uh, twice in the year, okay? So you will divide, so you will get the interest for six months, which is 6.29%, okay? Then you need to adjust stated rate also, uh, which is 10%, okay? Divided by number of times interest is paid, that is two times. So if you will divide, you will get a 5% semi-annual interest. So, but the point is at the date of issuance, what entry you will pass? Uh, because uh, first we need to record initially and then we will amortize the discount or that issue cost. So we will make the debit cash. Debit cash, how you will uh, get this value? You have a face value of 1 million minus discount because discount is the difference of issuance price and the face value because your face value is more, okay? So that is where this is the amount of discount and you will also subtract here 20,000 issuance cost, debt issuance cost. So this is what the finally the company will receive a cash, okay? And then uh, credit will go to bonds payable with always with the face value. And now you can see here, there is a uh, debit with the 906399 and credit is with the 1 million. So there is a difference. Difference is 93,601. Actually, this is the discount and issuance cost. If you will take the value of discount, uh, plus issuance cost. Okay, this is plus actually. Plus issuance cost. So this will give you total value of discount and debt issue cost. So what we did, uh, we will do here. We will debit the discount and debt issue cost. Okay. So why we uh, we can write separately also. You can write here debit uh, with only discount and debit with the debt issue cost. Okay. But I'm going to combine these two values. Why? Because we will use this combined value to amortize the debt issue cost. Okay. Along with the discount. Then here at the date of issuance, how uh, we can present 
this debt issue cost and discount in the uh, balance sheet at the date of issuance okay so what we need to do we will take total face value of the bonds which is 1 million so we will add here unamortized premium because here we don't have any premium but by the way unamortized premium mean to say the premium total premium minus accumulated amortization because here at the time of issuance we don't have any premium so i will put it zero less unamortized discount okay uh, like here you need a total amount of discount minus accumulated amortization because it is at the start of uh, year or at the time of issuance of the bonds so you will if you have a total discount you can put it here so we have total discount 73601 and we will amortize by the end of the period okay or as we will pay the interest so here we don't have any accumulated amortization at the time of issuance so just simply we will put the total value of discount then you have you will subtract your less unamortized debt issue cost which we will calculate this way issue cost minus accumulated amortization because here at the start we don't have any amortization accumulated amortization so that is why i will just try direct issue cost which is 20,000. So if I will take total face value minus unamortized discount minus unamortized debt issue cost, this is how you will get carrying amount of the bonds, which is equal to cash proceed at the date of issuance. Okay. Now we are going to use now effective interest method. Okay. How we will amortize by using effective interest method. So here we go. So because interest is paid, you know, uh, semi-annually, so it means there is, there is a maturity period of five years, but we will amortize over the 10 periods because interest is paid twice a year. So once you want to prepare the amortization schedule by using effective interest method, so first we will make, uh, we will make first column should be with the date. So we will put here 10 periods. We have end of, uh, june 30 okay year one then we have a december 31st year one then we have a june 30 year two december 30 year two same way june 30 year three december 31 year three okay and then you have a june 30 year four december 31 year four june 30 year five and december 31st year five okay so you will put the dates here then you will write the next column which is beginning of period net carrying amount and beginning of period net carrying amount you have calculated here just okay which is uh, 906399 which is equal to cash proceed also so we will write this value here we will start how i will tell you how to do it the next column we have here we will multiply this carrying value with the semi annual amortization interest which interest effective interest okay effective and effective interest is 6.29% you can just go back and check okay then if you will multiply carrying value with the effective interest rate you will get interest expense which you will write in the income statement okay then you will put the next column for interest payments interest payments actually interest payment we will make uh, as per the stated rate and you know the adjusted stated stated rate was five percent okay if you want to look at the calculation i will show you don't you worry then the difference of this interest expense and the interest payment is called amortization of discount and debt issue cost okay and then you have your ending uh, a carrying value ending carrying value how you will calculate you need a beginning carrying value okay plus 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 amortization of discount and that issue cost so you will get the ending carrying value so let's have a look from here so on june 30 year one so we have a beginning carrying value okay which is nine zero six three double nine which is equal to the cash proceed so you will multiply with the effective rate. Effective rate is 6.29%. This is how you will get the interest expense of $57,012. But actually you are paying interest 50,000. How? Because here we have a face value 1 million. Okay. Uh, then you will multiply this with the adjusted stated rate. Adjusted stated rate is a uh, 5%. Okay. So if you will multiply, this is how you will get a fixed interest payment after every six month of 50,000. So this is what, this is how we will get it, okay? Then the difference of interest expense and cash payments is called amortization of discount and bond issuance cost, okay? 
because here the bond issuance cost and discount is adjusted in the beginning carrying value so that is why it will be the amortization for both okay which is seven thousand twelve dollar now what we will do we have a beginning carrying value nine zero six three nine nine okay plus amortization of discount and bond issuance cost this is how you will get ending carrying value nine one three four double one this ending carrying value will be the beginning for next period okay again times interest rate you will get effective interest expense actual interest payments are fifty thousand because you are paying as per stated rate the difference of these two values i mean to say interest expense and interest payments is called your amortization of discount and debt issue cost if you will take again beginning carrying value which is nine one three four double one plus amortization of discount and debt issue cost it's equal to ending carrying value again this ending carrying value will be the beginning carrying value of next period i'm using word period not years okay because uh, interest is paid after every six month again times 6.29 percent which is effective rate you will get interest expense actual interest payments are fifty thousand. difference of interest expense and interest payments is your amortization of discount and that issue cost okay again beginning carrying value which is 928.65 plus amortization which is 7922 this is how you will get ending carrying value and you will continue this process over the 10 periods and you will see at the end of the 10 period your uh, carrying value will be equal to the face value because as we will amortize the debt issue cost or the discount so this will increase your carrying value over the periods and at the end of the period it will be equal to the face value and this value you will use it to repay to the bond holder okay now here the question is that what entries you will pass in the books of borrower okay so the entry is because your interest is paid don't forget after every six month so it means in the first year on the june 30 year one and on december 31st year one so you have to pass two entries okay and then i will show you how to present your bonds in the balance sheet and in the income statement okay so here we go so this is the entry what you will do here you will make it here a debit a bonds interest expense i hope you can see the cursor with always with the interest expense amount okay and this entry we are passing on june 30th 30th year one we have a bonds interest expense of fifty seven thousand twelve dollar let's confirm from the table if you will look at the table yes it is the first is fifty seven thousand twelve dollar okay so then what you will do here uh debit uh, sorry credit discount and bonds issuance cost with the amortized amount which is seven thousand twelve dollar confirm in the first period it is seven thousand and twelve dollar we will use this value actually uh i mean to say this value seven thousand twelve dollar okay seven thousand twelve dollar then what you will do here credit the cash you will credit the cash also with fifty thousand and this uh, for the cash you will use this value this value i hope you can view the cursor this value fifty thousand okay so it means every year we will pass our, our at the end of each period we will pass this entry debit interest expense with this value credit amortization of bonds or issuance cost with these values at the end of each period and credit will go to cash with the interest payment amounts every year okay so same here in the second period which is december 31st year one we will pass same entry debit interest expense with fifty seven thousand four fifty four. you will get this amount from the interest expense column credit discount and bonds issuance cost okay why it's credit because previously when we issued we made it debit so now we need to do it credit okay so what what we, then we have a credit cash of fifty thousand okay when it comes to the balance sheet presentation so please focus this balance sheet presentation i'm just preparing for the first year at the end of the first year not at the end of the first period at the end of first year so what you will do you will write a total face value of bond which is one million add unamortized premium we don't have any premium i will put it zero less 
unamortized debt issue cost and discount because here I'm uh, going to plug these two values together. So we have a total discount and debt issue cost of 93,601. You can confirm from the first entry which you passed at the start. Okay, minus accumulated amortization because in the first year, uh, you have amortized two times and there are two amounts of amortization. Let me show you. Here we have the first amount is $7,012. Second amount is $7,454. So if you will take these two value in the first year, this will give you accumulated amortization, okay? So if you will take total value minus accumulated amortization, okay, you will get unamortized amount for debt issue cost and discount. So face value less unamortized debt issue cost and discount, you will get carrying value in the balance sheet at the end of the first year. And this value directly you can calculate, you can check in the table. So look at here, this table and the ending carrying value is 928.65 at the end of first year or at the end of second period, okay? So this is how you will get the carrying value. Then income statement presentation for the first year. So what you will do, uh, you can take this way. You have a interest paid at stated rate. First take interest payment at stated rate. And we have paid twice interest of 50,000 and 50,000. So total interest payments are 100,000. Then less amortization of premium. You don't have any premium. Add amortization of discount and debt issue cost. In the first year, you have uh, amortized two times. Okay. And the first like June 30, the amortization amount is $7,012. And December 31st, year one, amortization amount is 7,454. It's the same amount which we've taken here, okay? So if you will add these two values, summation of these two value, which is $14,466. So if I will take face value plus amortization of discount and that issue cost for the period or for the year, so I will get interest expense, which will be equal to the effective rate, okay, which is $114,466. So you can confirm it. This should be equal to these two values. Okay, here we have, a, if you will go to the interest expense column, this interest expense, first value $57,012. Then we have a $57,454. So if you will make the summation, this will be equal to this value 114466 okay i hope this is clear uh, guys so this is how effective interest rate method will work okay and you can do for the remaining period also see you in the next video uh, with the new concept thank you so much see you in the next video bye bye